Born on September 18, 2007 in Cleveland, Texas, James Alexander Alex Hurley was 12 years old when his short life ended at the hands of his 14-year-old uncle, James Saucer III. His parental grandmother, Patricia Trish Batts, and her husband, James Saucer Jr., Alex had lived with his grandparents and their children, including James III, 18-year-old Madison Saucer, and 6-year-old Hunter for about two years. Alex's mother, Alicia Davis, lives in Texas along with her husband, Jesse Richardson, and Alex's brother, Austin Cameron. In August of 2017, Alicia allowed Alex to move in with his father, Tommy Tate, in Montana. Alicia's family said the move was to facilitate Alex getting to know Tommy better. Other resources report that Alex had requested to live with his father. Tommy was paralyzed in an accident in 2014, and unfortunately in 2018, Tommy died. Reportedly due to complications caused by his accident and recent related surgeries, his mother Patricia Batts took Alex in. Although Alicia reportedly tried multiple times to contact her son, Patricia stonewalled any kind of communication between Alex and his mother. Patricia, her husband, and James III told investigators that Alex's behavior became increasingly problematic after his father died, escalating further within the month before Alex's death. They said Alex had a tendency to harm himself, including hitting himself repeatedly in the head and running headfirst into walls and steel doors, and reported hearing voices telling him to rape and kill members of the family. Patricia also claimed that Alex, who she said was suicidal in the past and threatened to take pills, became drunk on alcohol and stole items from the family and from local stores. Patricia, Madison, and James III all told police that Alex would scratch himself to the point of bleeding and would then const constantly pick at his wounds, leaving open sores that refused to heal. In September of 2019, Alex was pulled out of public school in West Yellowstone to be homeschooled. On February the 3rd, 2020, Deputy Matthew Stubblefield from Gallatin County Sheriff's Office responded to a 911 call from the Saucer home at 325 Buffalo Drive in West Yellowstone, Montana, reporting the un unattended death of a 12-year-old. When detectives arrived, they found multiple wounds and contusions covering Alex's emaciated body. Other injuries included severe bruises on his buttocks that could have been caused by a paddle, other posterior contusions, and a large gash on the back of his head were not consistent with the self-inflicted injuries the family reported. Detective Sprinkle observed that the gash on the back of Alex's head did not appear consistent with running into a piece of furniture. James III told police that during the last week of January, Alex sustained the injury to the back of his head when he ran into the corner of the family's entertainment center, causing the gash that bled really bad. The family told investigators that because of Alex's erratic behavior, they watched his every move, even having a member of the family stay up at night to ensure Alex did not harm himself or someone else. According to the legend murderers, James III had woken up during the night of January the 27th and found Alex standing over Patricia with a knife. James III tackled Alex, punching the younger boy multiple times in the head and body. James III stands 6 feet tall and weighs 300 pounds. Alex was approximately 5 foot 3 and weighed 103 pounds at the time of his death. Patricia described the fight on January 27th as a bloodbath. During interviews with police, the family said that multiple times they had used a wooden paddle to hit Alex as punishment. James III denied ever using the paddle to hit Alex in the back of the head, saying he usually hit the boy's buttocks with the paddle. A photo of which was found on Patricia's phone. Patricia said that James III and Alex last fought as recently as February 1st. But James III said the fight on January 27th was worse and that he beat Alex pretty good during that incident. Patricia told police that her son had hit Alex with his fist, denying the paddle was employed during that attack. She claimed that on the night of February the 2nd, Alex slept on the floor in the living room, mumbling and moaning throughout the night before she found him dead the next morning. Madison, Alex's 18-year-old aunt, told detectives that she had been out watching the Super Bowl with friends that evening, returning home to find someone else asleep already. 
She said that Alex was asleep on the living room floor. Her mother, Patricia, was asleep nearby on the couch. To her knowledge, she told police no altercations took place after she arrived at home, but she said that she had texted friends that night saying that she thought her brother had killed Alex. An autopsy conducted by Dr. Sunil Parshar at the Montana State Crime Lab in Missoula revealed that Alex died from blunt force trauma to the back of the head. Bass confirmed that neither she nor her husband ever sought medical treatment for any of Alex's injuries. On February 6, detectives searched the cell phones belonging to Patricia, her husband, her daughter, and her 14-year-old son, and found a plethora of video recordings showing that young Alex endured unfathomable abuse while living with his father's parents and siblings. Video footage obtained during the investigation portrays a family gleefully engaging in torturing the 12-year-old boy on multiple occasions. The videos include a lot of disturbing details. In a video recorded on December 12th of 2019, Alex does jumping jacks while holding his buttocks, tearfully crying out that he has to go to the bathroom. Patricia's voice is heard in the background mocking him. On January 10th of 2020, Alex was recorded standing near the garage door, bent over at the waist with his head in his hands as he rocked back and forth, moaning and repeating the word no over and over. A video taken two minutes after that one shows Alex crying, saying, ow, it hurts so bad. And yet another video from the same day, this one on James Third's phone, a larger male is seen hitting, hitting Alex with a piece of wood while Alex sobs out, I fucking hate this. He is also heard on the video screaming about committing suicide. Several other videos show Alex being forced to do jumping jacks as punishment or to sit against the door or wall in a squatting position. In one video recorded on James III's phone, Alex is being is seen wearing only a t-shirt while the rest of the family wears coats. This video was texted to James Jr. along with the message, He ain't limping, see I told you. A day later, James III texted his mother. Dad said don't let him pass out from hypothermia. In videos from January 17th, Alex is seen with cuts on his face and wrist. Another shows him standing in front of a fan wearing only his underwear and Patricia berating him in the background. Oh, you're not, so, you're not even a human. You're some kind of thing. A video from January 23rd on Patricia's phone depicts Alex pinned between the living room wall and the couch, shirtless, with his arms in the air over his head. Red marks and injuries to his shoulder are visible. When Alex rests his head against a window frame, apparently starting to fall asleep, Patricia snaps, Wake up. Get your fucking head off there. In another clip, Patricia snarls at Alex to keep his hands apart and open in, in the air. Alex, who is crying and visibly trembling, says that he is in pain and his head hurts. But Patricia's ice-cold response is, Who cares? A third clip. Timestamp 25 minutes later shows Alex in the same position with Patricia, telling him that the reason she can't stand him is because she brought him into her home and gave him everything, only for Alex to steal her father-in-law's wallet. A video from James III's phone shot several minutes after the ones on his mother's phone shows Alex screaming, crying, and yelling, Ow! Patricia slaps Alex repeatedly in the face, saying, That's for screaming. Six-year-old Hunter sprays Alex in the face with a clear liquid from a spray bottle, which detectives believe was rubbing alcohol. Alex, trying to cover his face with his hand, says, He's burning me. Patricia twists Alex's arms behind his back and bends him over at the waist, hissing at him, Shut your fucking mouth or I'll break this son of a bitch off on you. She twists his, br twists his wrist while his arm is bent backwards and says, You're going to stay this way so you don't choke yourself. When he replies that he wasn't choking himself, she says, yeah, you were. Everybody's seen it. In a video on Patricia's phone from January 27th, Alex is once again shown standing in front of fans in the dining room in his underwear, clutching himself as if he was cold. Patricia's voice then again can be heard de degrading Alex. But in this video, Hunter once again appears behaving nonchalantly as if the terrible scene is just another day in the saucer house. During this video, Alex says that his mom is a drunk and that she hates him. In another clip, he begins to cry and says he can't remember anything and that everything is a blur. Incriminating text messages, videos, and online searches were also discovered. 
At 8.07 a.m. on January 17th, the following text exchange took place between James Jr. and James III. The son says, he's worse than your... He's worse when you're gone, way worse. The father says, that's what mom said. I don't know what to do. The son says, I'm going to end up killing him today. On January 27th, the 14-year-old performed a search for what was the longest coma. Multiple searches were done on February the 2nd, including what are the symptoms of brain injury, symptoms of sleep deprivation, concussion symptoms, and how do you tell if someone has a concussion? A photo on Madison's phone indicated that Alex had the gash on the back of his head, supposedly from running into the entertainment center on January 27th, as early as January the 23rd. Bjorn Boyer, deputy county attorney from the Gallatin County Attorney's Office, described the events leading up to Alex's death as systematic torture and beatings. He said that the family later admitted exaggerating Alex's mental health problems. Detectives also searched the family's home multiple times. During the initial search, they saw a head-sized indentation in one of the walls with traces of blood nearby. During a later search, forensic evidence was located showing that large amounts of blood had been cleaned up from the floor and various surfaces. The amount of blood would be consistent of Alex's head wound, but it but was found in an area of the living room separate from the part of the home where James III had reported Alex had his concussion with the entertainment center. During the police interviews, the whole family denied being even seeing a large amount of blood present in the home. Also found during the detective search was the fact that most of the food in the house was locked up so Alex could not access it. Video footage from two years prior to Alex's death showed a healthy and well-fed boy, according to the court documents, while at the time of his death he weighed just over 100 pounds. During interviews, the family disclosed to police that Alex and James III frequently fought. Patricia told police that during the Super Bowl on February the 2nd, she was asleep awakening to her 14-year-old son, James III, hitting Alex with a paddle. Four people have been charged in the connection of Alex's death. 48-year-old Patricia Lynn Betts, 47-year-old James Danny Saucer Jr., and 14-year-old James Danny Saucer III have been charged with felling deliberate homicide by accountability. The fourth person to be charged in Alex's death is 18-year-old Gage Roche, a friend of James III. Gage had been charged with felony assault on a minor after detectives identified him as the man seen on one of the videos beating Alex with a wooden paddle. Gage's grandmother spoke with KBZK to express her shock. Once I found out, I'm like, oh my God, Brenda Reed said, it's a punch in my stomach, you know. I knew nothing until yesterday when I got locked up. Brenda attended court on February the 14th in support of Gage, allow, along with his girlfriend, Brooklyn. He's like a gentle giant, Brenda said in disbelief. It just boggles my mind. I was signed, blindsided. He's the reason I get up in the morning. He's the reason for me living. She told a reporter, I hope this is a turning point and he grows up. Court documents indicate that detectives relocated Gage after he defended the Saucer family on the Gallatin County Sheriff's Office's Facebook. It is unacceptable to strike or otherwise brutalize a child, Prosecutor Boyer said in court. There's two instances that at least allege in here. If he is convicted, Gage would face up to 40 years in prison. In court on February 13th, James III admitted to kicking Alex repeatedly in the head approximately 24 to 36 hours before he died, which is likely what caused the boys' death. Patricia's friend, close friends who wanted to remain anonymous said, before it was confirmed to me personally that it was them, that these were, this was my friend that did this. I couldn't help but go to what this was like for him and how scared he must have been. Speaking with KRTV, the friend said she knew Patricia had reached her breaking point. I knew something was wrong, and I encouraged her repeatedly to get him some help and give, and have him put somewhere, and she just re really expressed that she just did not like him at all. This story broke my heart. If you see or you know of alleged abuse or neglect, please reach out to the child abuse hotline. You could save a child. Be the voice.